Stephen eight in a class by himself, Chapter One. In what year was the Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution ratified? She could have called on anybody. There were twenty-two other kids in the classroom, and they all had their hands in the air. Frances did. Teddy did. Gina did, of course. Even Nick Blonsky, who usually sits in the back row with his pencil up his nose, had his hand raised. She could have called on one of them, right? Guess who she calls on? Nate! Yep! Mrs. Godfrey always does this. She always calls on me when I don't know the answer. And she can tell I don't know it. Ever hear somebody say that dogs can smell fear? That's Mrs. Godfrey. She's like a dog. A big, ugly, nasty dog. Grrr. I sort of scooch down in my seat. The whole class is staring at me. My ears start to burn. Then my cheeks. I can feel tiny droplets of sweat being up on my forehead. Well, she barks. Um, what was the question again? I've heard that on an average day, you use about 10% of your brain power. While sitting here with my mouth turning as dry as a sack of sand, I really need that other 90% to kick in. But my mind is blank. Mrs. Godfrey steps away from the chalkboard and starts toward me. She looks mad. No, worse than mad. She looks mean. Her face is flushed. I can see tiny flecks of spittle at the corners of her mouth. That's pretty gross. I brace myself. And then the bell rings and rings and keeps on ringing. Except it doesn't really sound like the school bell. It sounds more like ring a ling 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 Whap! I was dreaming! I blink hard, then let out a huge sigh of relief. I've never been so happy to hear that alarm clock in my entire life. Not that I'm ready to get up or anything. Closing my eyes again, I flop back down onto my pillow. <sighs> Time to go to school. No. Woof! <gasps> hey, thanks a lot, Dad. Way to break it to me gently. Nice parenting. Actually, his parenting skills aren't that bad. He makes the nastiest tuna casserole you ever tasted. But he's pretty harmless, especially compared to some of the psycho dads I've seen at Little League games. It's just that dad's kind of clueless. He has no idea what it's like to be me. Parental fact. Once you go bald, you completely lose your ability to relate to anyone under the age of 30. I mean, how long has it been since, since he was in middle school? 30 or 40 years? I think he's forgotten how it feels to be held prisoner all day long in a building that smells like a combination of chalk dust, ammonia, and mystery meat. He can't remember what it's like to be an average sixth grader. <sighs> Zip! Not that I'm an average sixth grader. Okay, I'll admit that I'm not exactly Joe Honor Roll, but answer me this. When I get out there in the real world, is anybody going to care whether or not I know who was vice president under Warren G. Hardy? And don't try to pretend that you know who it was because you don't. The point is, I want to use my talents for more than just memorizing useless facts. I'm meant for bigger things. I am destined for greatness. I'm still not 100% sure what kind of greatness I'm destined for, but I'll figure it out. I've got options. I keep a list on my closet door about this very subject. Could achieve greatness in 1. Soccer. I'm the goalie for our middle school team. 2. Music. Enslave the mollusk, the band I started with Francis Tate and Artur, rocks. Three, cartooning. I specialize in caricatures of teachers. Four, table football. 
I'm awesome at it, but it might be a tough way to make a living. There's also stuff I definitely won't achieve greatness in, like opera, synchronized swimming, and cat grooming. Enough said. Let's get back to the unfortunate fact that today is a school day, but what kind? You know, not all school days are created equal. You can rank them by category. Just so you know, I'm really into ranking stuff. One day, one time, I spent a solid week ranking every kind of snack food I could think of. At the top, cheese doodles. At the bottom, rice cakes. Dad fact. Dad handed out rice cakes for Halloween one year. That was also the year our house got egged. Connect the dots, Dad. Here you go, kids. What the? If I were to grade the different kinds of school days report art style, here's how they stack up. A plus. Field trip days. I'm not talking about lame field trips when a teacher makes you walk around around the neighborhood on Earth Day picking up trash. I'm talking about an all-day get-on-a-bus-and-go-somewhere field trip. Even if they give you a worksheet in the home that you might actually learn something, you can usually come up with an excuse not to do it. That's what I did last year when we went to the aquarium. Uh, walrus ate my homework. B. Special events days. This is when classroom time gets eaten up by something better, like a movie or assembly. Or better yet, some sort of emergency. Last spring, Mr. Skarewitzki's wig caught on fire and set off the smoke alarm in the faculty lounge. We got to evacuate the building and ended up playing ultimate frisbee on the lawn for an hour. That was awesome! For everybody except Mr. Skarewitzki. I should be in math right now! C minus. Substitute teacher days. I think we would all agree that subs are always, almost always better than the real teachers. By better, I mean more clueless. The absolute best subs are the fresh out of college ones who have never taught a day in their lives. Frankly, they're not very bright. Or maybe they're just really gullible. You know, the word gullible isn't in the dictionary. It's not? But Mr. Galvin always lets us chew gum in class. Okay, carry on. D. Normal days. Unfortunately, most days are like this. You spend six and a half action-packed hours studying subjects like photosynthesis and the War of 1812. Thrilling. You get home after school and your parents are like, What did you learn in school today? And you think about it for a solid and seconds, and then you say, I don't have the foggiest idea. F. Train wrecks. There are so many ways for a school day to go wrong that it's almost impossible to list them all. You could get screamed at by a teacher, usually Mrs. Godfrey, for absolute no reason, which seems to happen to me a lot. You could get roughed up by Chester, the school bully, who looks like he spikes his chocolate both with human growth hormone. Or your teacher could nail you with a quiz or a test you never saw it coming. Test. Go. Test? Now there's a horrifying thought. Do I have to test today? I don't remember any teacher mentioning test today, but like I already told you, I don't remember much of anything they say. I usually start to lose interest right around the time I hear Settle down, class. Settle down, class, and teacher speak means let the mind-numbing boredom begin. Yeah, 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 yeah,
The truth is, he's kind of a geek. But I'm not allowed to call him that, because we're tight. We'd known each other since the first day of kindergarten when he started snoring down our nap time. So I hit him in the head with my Thomas and take engine lunchbox and we bed restaurants for cents. Francis fact. He insists on eating his lunch every day in alphabetical order. Apple, celery, sandwich, yogurt. Let me see if he's up yet. Yep, he's up. And he's reading, of course. But wait a minute. Look what he's reading. His social studies textbook. So we must have a test today. Oh, no. This is bad. This is very bad. First, because my social studies textbook is in my locker at school. And second, because I'm suddenly remembering what Mr. Godfrey said to me after our last test. If you do this poorly on the next text, Nate, you could very well end up at summer school. D plus. Yoip, we got social studies first period. That only gives me about 45 minutes to study my class notes. Class notes, class notes, where am I class notes? Aha, there they are. Uh-oh. Notes, War of 18. Well, War of 1812. Quack! Look out! Nate plus Jenny. Home run! Pow! Mayday! Mayday! Nate right! Nate right! Nate right! What a save! Big Nate. Mr. Galvin. Why doesn't anyone respect me? PS 38. Well, it looks like my class notes aren't going to be much help. Not unless Mrs. Goffrey gives us extra credit for doodling. I'm dead. R.I.P. Nate. Right.